There have been many stories about how the pandemic has impacted the economy, and one segment that's been hit particularly hard is the wedding industry in Massachusetts. With the size of gatherings limited to 50 people outside, many couples are postponing their big day. Carolee McGrath spoke with Tim Briggs, the chairman of the Wedding and Event Alliance of Massachusetts, to learn more. Oh, I mean, you know, the wedding industry has been closed since basically the middle of March. We haven't been able to host uh, weddings or large events at all. And keep in mind, we were coming off of a slow season. So a lot of venues haven't done any work basically since October of 2019. And what segment of the economy do you represent in Massachusetts? Well, uh, the wedding industry represents $1.4 billion uh, of the Massachusetts uh, economy in 2019. And tell me a little bit about how many weddings would you say typically per year uh, that Massachusetts would host? Well, that $1.4 billion was broken up over 35,000 weddings last year. And if you can imagine that at the venue that, I, that I'm the operations manager for, where we normally do 70 to 80 weddings a year, we've only done two. And so if you can imagine what the, what the rest of the industry looks like. Tell me a little bit about the venue uh, that you uh, manage. Oh, the Canoe Club Ballroom, we've been in business since 1964. Family owned, uh, the current second generation owner, Stacy Marola is uh, is at the helm right now, and it's just it's it's a beautiful spot. It's it's a wonderful spot, Riverside in West Bridgewater, Massachusetts. So, what are you hearing um, from the governor's office about when um, and if you're able to get back up and running? I know the second part of phase three was stalled. Uh, indoor remains at 25, and outdoor has been now reduced to uh, 50 from 100. Obviously, uh, that makes it very difficult to plan a big party. Well, I mean, basically, it's a continued shutdown is how we view it. Uh, even with 100 people outdoors, you have to understand less than 5% of the venues in Massachusetts have an outdoor option. So the so the 5% may have benefited from 100 people. But remember, um, the 25 or the 100 people for indoor or outdoors uh, also does not include dancing. We're not allowed to have any dancing, not allowed to have a walk-up bar. So what brides are telling us is it just is not a wedding and people don't want to have weddings with these rules. And so we view this in the industry as a continued closure, whereas we should have been revering phase three as, as a reopening for our industry. And so you've come together you know, with many different uh, vendors uh, and banquet facilities to form this alliance. Tell me a little bit about that. Yes, yeah, so on July 2nd, when the phase three regulations were uh, announced that would be rolled out on July 6th, uh, we decided as an industry to get together, and it's something that we have never done before. Our industry, we all view each other as competition because we technically are. Um, but we got together as an industry, and we had uh, representatives that work at over 60 wedding reception venues. We had wedding reception owners, managers, and caterers all come together at the Canoe Club Ballroom representing uh, people who work at over 60 venues. And we got together, and we tried to hammer out a – reopening plan that we thought the governor could with, live with, brides could live with, and venues could live with. Uh, something that we thought would be completely safe to reopen, uh, and that can be found on our website at uh, uh, eventalliancema.org. Tell us a little bit about that plan, though, and how it would work, knowing that, you know, I mean, anywhere you go now, you have to have a mask on. I'm not sure a bride and groom are probably yeah. going to want to roll into the ballroom with a mask on, but, but how would you make it work if, if it uh, was possible? Well, we wanted to follow most restaurant regulations, which was to uh, wear a mask in most common areas um, uh, and people seated at tables of no more than six, again, following rest, restaurant regulations, uh, people would not be required to wear a mask when sitting. Um, also some things that would change if you've ever been to a wedding, the second you come in, everyone is in this, this close tight line, uh, looking uh, for the seating arrangement, the little cards are on a seating chart. So basically it's getting the seating arrangement to the guests ahead of time so they can come in, go right to their table. Uh, if you've ever been to a wedding, you know that a lot of places have a separate cocktail hour space. That's a real tight and enclosed area where people are standing around talking, um, not social distancing at all. So we agreed as an industry to shut those rooms down. And when when uh, guests arrive to a wedding, they come into the ballroom wearing masks, go right to their tables, and that's where they can take off their masks. So we really, are, we really came up with a, a comprehensive plan that included social distancing, included, some, uh, included mask wearing, uh, no walk-up bars, so we're going to have cocktail 
uh, service to the tables, which is something that our industry has never had to do before. Um, we really are trying to make concessions to, to keep weddings safe and mostly following restaurant regulations. And just so you know, recently, uh, either I believe it was last week, a federal judge ruled in New York that New York wedding reception venues, uh, well, a specific venue um, could follow restaurant regulations that it was um, uh, th that it was against the constitutionality uh, for them to uh, to hold uh, the reception venue to a, a different standard. So, what are you hearing from um, you know state officials? Uh, well, so uh, so we did get our letter to the governor's office. Uh, I did have a conversation with someone in the governor's office, and then we ended up having a one-hour meeting uh, with the undersecretary and chief of staff of the ATD and the ATD, the Housing and of uh, Housing and Economical uh, Development of Massachusetts, is in charge of the reopening plan, and they literally did not want to discuss our reopening plan. It was the same soundbite for an hour. We're not making changes. We're not making changes. We're not making changes. When I pressed them for an answer, well, what part of our plan do you think might not be safe for us to implement? They wouldn't give us an answer. When they were when they were asked, well, what part do you think is safe? They wouldn't give us an answer. Um, the wedding industry is is unique uh, in in the case that when a restaurant is told that they could open, if they were told on a Friday they could open on Monday, most restaurants could open on a Monday. Well, the wedding industry is different. If you tell us on a Monday that we can open up on Friday, there's no bride that is waiting until the Monday before her wedding to see if she can have her event. So brides are canceling two to three months in advance. So basically, the second they tell us we can even open, we're still technically closed for two or three months. Our industry is absolutely devastated, and we're about to come into another slow season, which means that we potentially could all be closed for about 18 months straight. And by the way, we're not being given any financial assistance from the government other than some PPP money that really only helped most venues for two to three months. And now we're facing an 18 month closure pretty much. Tell me a little bit about some of the vendors that are also part of the wedding industry. So it's not obviously just, you know, the banquet facilities, but it's, uh, you know, the guys and gals in the band, it's photographers, videographers. Um, I mean, and then if there's like, you know, any sort of hotels that, that people would be staying at as well. Tell me some of the ripple effects. I mean, I mean, the ripple effects are widespread. It's, and keep in mind, it also affects tourism in Massachusetts because when people come in, they tend to go into Boston and see the duck boats or go to see the local parks, or visit local restaurants. There's a lot of money that's lost, but you're talking about photographers, videographers, uh, invitation companies, um, uh, DJs, bands, like you said, uh, venues. You're talking about wedding planners, dress shops, tuxedo shops, uh, limo and transportation companies. I mean, it's just the uh, makeup, hair. Uh, it, it's just, it's, it's endless. Uh, how about buying bridesmaids and groomsmen's gifts at the, at the store or online? It's just that it has such far-reaching tentacles, it, it, it's horrible. And I've heard stories and talked to people uh, such as a photographer who had to sell all their equipment so that they could afford to put food on the table for their family and keep the roof over the head of their family. And they literally have had to shut down their company. It's the small companies that this happens to first in this type of an event. And eventually you're going to see the same thing happening to wedding venues. Wedding venues have the biggest overhead of anybody in the industry, and with zero money and zero profit coming in right now, I don't know how much longer our industry is going to be able to hold on. And, and you know, it, some people have said, well, why don't you guys go get different jobs? Well, with Massachusetts having the highest unemployment rate at 17%, what other jobs can we even get if we wanted to? So what's your next step as a, um, as a group now? So, so we're, we're actually, we're discussing our options. Uh, we did have a lobbyist who was working for us and the lobbyist has now had to bow out because they basically told us that we're throwing our money away by having a lobbyist because the government won't even talk to the lobbyist. The, the government won't even give any answers. It's almost like everybody is tight lipped and everyone is on the same page, including all of the congressmen and senators, you know, the state congressmen and senators, nobody will stand up for us. So we're actually talking about the potential of a lawsuit. Do something like New York and some other states have done. Um, I, I, I'm not a constitutional expert, but uh, you know, if you're going to keep a specific segment of the industry closed and not a system, then you better let us open up. And, and by the way, what we really want to do is work. We're, we're a proud group of people. We don't want to hand out. You know what we want to do? We want to host weddings. We want to make people happy again. We want to create memories. 
That's all we're looking to do. So we want to sit down with Lieutenant Governor Polito and we want to go over our plan and let's see if we can hash out a plan that keeps us safe. And by the way, the strict regulations have now, have now had an opposite effect. Now people are going to backyard weddings because they can't have weddings at a, at a professional venue with a professional cleaning staff and people to manage it. So now they're having backyard weddings that are completely unsafe and that's blowing up some of the numbers. There was a, a, an event down in Chatham that had 35, 40 people at a house party and 11 or 12 people got COVID-19. Uh, it's, it, you know, these unsafe uh, events are going to continue and they're only going to get worse because people who want to get married will get married. If you want to get married, the next step is you want to buy a house, you want to have kids, you really want to wait a year, year and a half, two years for that to happen. No. So you're still going to get married and have that party, only now it's going to be done completely unsafe. And that is what's adding to some of these COVID numbers. And I looked at the numbers last night, and I have to tell you, the numbers are actually at an all-time low. The percent of positives are at an all-time low right now. This spike that we just rolled back the numbers on, I believe was caused by 4th of July. I'm not an expert but I'm, I'm seeing that written a lot of places. And so the 4th of July spike is now over and the numbers are going back down. Uh, unfortunately, this alarmist approach is not working and all it's going to do is destroy countless lives in our industry.